Hey guys, so this year about a million people decided to relocate from whichever country they were in to another country in the hope of a better life. You know for a fact only a handful of them made it. Now if you want to be amongst the handful that make it soon, keep watching till the end of this video. So more money, a better lifestyle, a better work-life balance, better education for your kids, better quality of air, better political stability. These are just some of the reasons why people want to move from whichever country they are in right now to other countries in the hope. Now, if you have this in mind this year or for the past few years, don't worry, you're not alone. A lot of people think like you and millions of people are trying to make the move as well. Now, some succeed while others don't. And the reason for success largely depends on which country you are trying to apply to. Now, some countries are extremely welcoming. They want a lot of talent from the outside and so they actively reduce the barriers of entry into the country, making the migration process a whole lot easier. Other countries are a lot more picky. They want to restrict migration to only the best of the best, the best in whatever they do. And hence, they increase the barriers, trying to reduce the number of migrations happening in the country. Now, whether you are successful or not in moving largely depends on which country you've picked. Now, I always try and make decisions based on what I think is the most effective way of using my time. So let me put it to you this way. Would I rather spend my time trying to figure out ways to try and get into a country where I know the entry barriers are already really high or should I optimize for my time by looking at countries where I know the barriers are low and where I thus stand a higher possibility or a chance of getting through. Now if the answer is the latter you're already smarter than most of the people in the world because you have picked the right answer. This is the easier way to get into other countries. Which is why in today's video I'm lining up the countries that are easiest to migrate into and the countries that you have a higher chance of getting into as well. Starting off with New Zealand. New Zealand is a popular destination for immigration, mainly because of the various migration visas it has to offer. It is often ranked as one of the most liberal countries in the world, so naturally, the majority of the expats in New Zealand recommend New Zealand for its quality of life. It shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that New Zealand is also considered one of the top countries for women to live in. Expats in New Zealand also have a very positive outlook on the future, more than expats in other countries. And why not? The country also offers various types of immigration visas, such as the New Zealand Visitor Visa, the New Zealand Student Visa, New Zealand Work Visa, and the New Zealand Resident Visa. The best part is free or subsidized healthcare and free education in government-run schools. Another country that is often a top contender in this list is Australia. It welcomes applicants from all over the world with flexible immigration processes and policies and has various types of immigration options such as student visas, work visas, temporary visas, short stay visas, skill visas and visitor visas. The reason why so many look to move to Australia is not just immigration being a simple process but also because of a higher quality of life with better work-life balance, natural beauty, easy-going nature of the Aussies and an excellent healthcare and education system. The land down under is also renowned for its superior higher education system, personal safety, and is known to be one of the most liberal countries. If you are someone who enjoys the outdoors, either for yourself or for your family, Australia is a natural choice, not just because of the very ecosystem, but also because of the quality of air in Australia, which is among the best in the world. Residents often enjoy a pleasant trek in one of Australia's natural reserves after work, or hit the surf so just pop by the beach to unwind. Australia is one of the countries that allows dual citizenships, which means immigrants do not need to renounce their original nationality to become Australian. With 85 million individuals and an extremely strong economy, Germany is an excellent choice for those looking to migrate. Germany has actually been voted the fifth most favourable country to move to. Another reason why Germany is so lucrative is because of the comprehensive welfare scheme where if a person cannot take care of themselves, the state steps in to financially help. Other benefits include child benefits, where parents with children get a monthly stipend, competitive salaries, low crime rate, excellent transport, free healthcare and education. To immigrate to Germany, a person must be financially stable, have health insurance, know basic German and possess a visa when travelling from select countries. If you'd like to learn German, you can get a 6 months job seeker visa to begin looking for jobs in Germany. It also offers a settlement visa for qualified workers. 
If you are highly qualified with a professional master's or a PhD, your chances of getting some work is a lot simpler. The same goes for IT specialists and engineers. You can turn into a German resident in 33 months if you have an EU blue card or six years with German language scope. The Netherlands is another country you should definitely consider. 99% of the Dutch speak English. It is also home to organizations like Shell, Unilever and Philips and probably one of the best countries in Europe for technical and non-technical professionals. While you've probably heard of Netherlands in reference to their tulips and windmills, a slightly lesser known fact is that at 23 million, their cycles outnumber the people in Netherlands. It is also the second best place in the world for women. You need an employment permit to begin in Netherlands, or you can likewise get a self-employed residence permit. It requires five years to get citizenship, but this country unfortunately doesn't allow dual citizenship. While the healthcare system is great, you would need to get yourself compulsory healthcare insurance, and like with most progressive countries, government education is free, making the Netherlands one of the best countries to migrate to. Now before I move on, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so and remember to click on the bell icon for notifications. Ireland is an English-speaking country in Europe with a massive number of openings for technical workers. Overall, the country has a lot to offer, from green rolling hills and abundantly varied wildlife to a thriving business and diverse culture. Over the past years, a number of business organizations have moved their headquarters to Ireland because of their low tax rates. Giants including Google, Apple, Facebook and IBM have chosen Ireland for their European base of operations and Irish people have won six Nobel Prizes. With relaxed residency rules, just a few years of residence in Ireland will land you an Irish passport, which happens to be one of the strongest passports in the world opening up visa-free travel to 27 countries and EU member states and over 100 other countries. If you are a specialized individual, you can get a PR in Ireland within two years and for its non-tech, it requires five years. You can also become Irish in five years and alternately, if you're a business person, you can apply for a startup visa. With its excellent healthcare system, free education, welcoming locals and love for football and having a good time, Ireland should definitely make your list in countries to consider migrating to. Moving on to the next country on the list, Singapore. Known for its political stability, high standard of living, and ability to live and work in English, Singapore is a popular destination for those looking to migrate. Singapore's population of only 5 million is good news because it means that they are always looking to acquire foreign talent, which translates to high acceptance rates and work permits and a high average salary. You need an employment permit to get things rolling in Singapore, and it can take as long as 10 years to turn into a Singapore resident. However, if you'd like to initiate your own startup, you can set up your organization and obtain an entry pass to begin living in Singapore. The city has become a business hub that welcomes investors from every corner of the world. The government launched the Singapore Global Investor Program to provide permanent residence to foreign investors. Gaining access to citizenship is only after three years. Next up is Spain. Spain is very popular with expats because of its pleasant weather, low living costs, and public and private healthcare and education system. Another reason why Spain is a top destination for those looking to move is because of its golden visa program, which helps with permanent residency, though you'd still require enough money and an investment plan. Spain also offers fast-tracking citizenship programs for nationalities of previous Spanish colonies. The country also recently announced a digital nomad visa, which allows individuals to live in the country for up to 12 months while working for any company they choose. Under certain conditions, the visa can be extended for up to three years. Residency in Spain can be gained by purchasing a property worth at least €500,000, creating a business that is recognized as a general interest for Spain, bank deposits with a minimum value of 1 million euros in Spanish financial institutions, or government bond investments with a minimum value of 2 million euros. Another way to settle in this country is through the non-lucrative residence visa. 
which is granted to those who have an income of at least 25,560 euros annually, plus 6,390 euros per each additional family member. Other residence permits are also available, like those for employment, family reunification, studying, and so on. Spain also offers the opportunity to its residents to become Spanish nationals through naturalization after 10 years of legal residence in the country. And moving on to Canada. Canada is one of the best countries for people in the world in terms of immigration. The application number is increasing every year, and one of the major reasons is Canada's easy and friendly immigration policy. Canada offers flexibility in obtaining visas, study and work permits, and post-graduation work permits. The country is also ranked as one of the most livable places in the world, with several of its major cities cracking top 10 lists for best places to live and work. With an accessible healthcare system, immigrant-friendly policies, and ample job opportunities, Canada is often a safe haven for individuals looking to settle down in a new country. It's one of the most immigration-friendly nations in the world and has been rated as one of the best countries to live in by the UN. The country is rich in natural and oil resources and has some of the best universities in the world. It also has a low crime and violence rate and a high standard of living. If you are a skilled individual, you can immigrate to Canada either in the Federal Express Entry Framework or through a provincial nomination. Another job is to secure a job with a Canadian employer. If you are able to get high scores in an English language and have a graduate or master's degree, your way to permanent residency is a lot easier. Also, if you wish to move with your parents or siblings, this is what you should be considering. It takes three years to become a Canadian resident or a citizen with top-notch living and great education in schooling and medical services. So where does the UK figure in this list? Because I typically talk about the UK and how you can move here and what your life's going to be like, right? But here's the thing. The UK is an absolutely brilliant place to be. But the truth is that migrating into the UK is a little challenging and it's not the easiest place to move to. As a working professional, you need a sponsor to sponsor your visa. And a lot of times the requirements for these roles are extremely stringent. As a student, you need to get admission into a college and then you need to consistently perform to ensure that they don't revoke your visa. And apart from all of this, the fees can actually be quite high. But here's the thing. Once you're in on a valid visa, you can apply for an ILR, which is an indefinite leave to remain, the equivalent of a PR in five years and become a citizen in six years. Now, if you'd like to know more about the process about getting an ILR or PR in the UK, all you need to do is watch this video.